I was disgusted by what we are representing to the world. This is United, this is the United States being represented in this small area in Jerusalem. And what are we putting out there? We're not putting out Christ. We're, we're putting out sexual deviancy. That's what the LGBTQ represent in that flag and what, and what the pride represents in America. It doesn't represent love. It doesn't represent togetherness and unity. If it did, that's what the American flag is. That American flag represents love and all the things that encompass the United States of America. Ladies, welcome back to the Officer Tatum Show. I want to tell you guys about the Food for the Poor campaign that we're doing. This is our third day of the summer campaign to help feed the poorest of the poor here in our hemisphere by inviting uh, you to donate uh, to our friends at Food for the Poor, a Christian nonprofit relief organization that provides life-saving food to hungry children in Haiti, Guatemala, Honduras, and many other poor countries throughout the Caribbean and Latin America. So far, listeners just like you have already donated uh, and donated generously, to be quite honest. And my question to you is, what would you do if you were in a situation where your children were hungry or where a catastrophic event uh, occurred in your town, in your city, rendering you incapable of getting food, fresh water? What would you want another person to do? Click on emergency relief a supply banner at the very top of my website and donate something. It doesn't have to be a million dollars. It doesn't have to be $20. It can be something. Now, some people are, are fortunate enough that $100 is not going to break their bank and it's, a, it's an adequate amount that they can give. Well, give $100. And I'll tell you what a $100 gift will give. $100 will help provide emergency uh, an emergency kit, including tarps, first aid, hygiene supplies, and blankets. Or if you give $240, it'll provide uh, emergency kits plus weeks of food and water. So whatever you do, do it out of the kindness of your heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. Give. Go to theofficertatum.com, theofficertatum.com, or you could text Tatum to 91999. That's Tatum to 91999. Or you can call the phone number. 855-918-4673. That's 855-918-HOPE. I want you guys to be a blessing and give hope uh, to the people who need it the most through food for the poor. And the beauty of our country is allowing us to have the freedom so so many people have the opportunity to come. There's a lot of people that have an opportunity to come to God. So we have a lot of Christians that profess to be Christians, that are quasi-Christian, which means that they're some of them are trying, they haven't gotten to the place that they need to be, but we have an army of people that outnumber any remnant of degeneracy that we have in our country. And all we need people to do is to become activated. You know, it's almost like a chemical reaction. You know, you pour something on top of it and there's a reaction. Yes. I'm hoping that the Holy Spirit and the people of God can mix in with the dormant Christians amongst us and cause a, a reaction to where people begin to stand up, people begin to be bold, understand the value of being committed to it. Because in our country, you know, we have people that are kind of like lukewarm with it. They go to church on Sunday and they haven't thought about God not one time during the week. Right. And if we can just come together and stop being divided by a denominational principle and come together and say, hey, man, our faith in God is at risk. Not our faith, but our exercise of our faith in America is at risk. If we don't come together now, we may miss our opportunity to continue this thing called freedom and have an ability to observe Jesus the way we do now. Yeah, I agree. I think even more, our faith, our freedom and our liberty are at risk. Yeah, that's not right. just our faith, because freedom and liberty come from God, not governments. Mm -hmm. Governments always move towards authoritarianism. They want to dictate what's right and wrong and dictate what you can do and what you can't do and what you can have and what you can't have. God's the one who brings freedom. And that's why the church is so important, not to convene worship services. We're the conscience of the culture. Right. And I understand that biblical worldview is not popular in all. It's not that we're preaching hate against anybody. We're saying that the creator of all things has said there's a right and wrong. And we're gonna line up with him and all of our brokenness and our imperfection. My life's not perfect. Yours may be, mine's not. <laughs> but I'm still gonna own that biblical worldview. You know, we were walking the other night past, just down from our hotel and we saw the American consulate. 
-hmm. and they had the the LGBTQ pride flag flying at the American consulate with a big banner bigger than our flag. America's exporting that to the nations. Right. You know, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't allow us to fly the Christian flag right. at the consulate. Right. There, there's something wrong with that. When they're celebrating that over a value that has shaped our universities, our schools, our legal system, we're gonna to have to have the courage to stand for what we believe in. Yeah, we can't, and we can't be afraid of persecution. We can't be afraid of losing friends. We can't be afraid of being ridiculed at, for a temporary period of time. We have to stand up. When I went down there and I saw that, I was disgusted by what we are representing to the world. This is unite. This is the United States being represented in this small area in Jerusalem, and what are we putting out there? We're not putting out Christ. We're we're putting out sexual deviancy. That's what the LGBTQ represent in that flag, and what and what the pride represents in America. It doesn't represent love. It doesn't represent togetherness and unity. If it did, that's what the American flag is. That American flag represents love and all the things that encompass the United States of America, not a separate flag of sexual deviancy. And it, 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 I literally wanted to go and tear it down and rip the thing and set it on fire. I would not do that, but I wanted to because it's not only disrespectful to our country and the people who have fought in our country, it's disrespectful to our God. That's not the way you represent in the Holy Land, in my opinion. You know, you're in Jerusalem. Can you know the history right here? And you have a flag that represents the complete opposite of what we believe. It's, I wish that even in Jerusalem that they would reject that. I know I don't know what the rules and regulations could be, but it's like, you know, reject that. We shouldn't fly that in our country. Right. You shouldn't fly that in, 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 Jer in Jerusalem. I can't believe that they would have the audacity to do something like that. But, you know, that's the times that we live in. And that's why Christians need to stand up. And, and I would argue we need to infiltrate. We should be in positions of power in politics. Yeah. Maybe more of us Christians need to run for office and get into a position of power. And then we vote based on those principles that surround our faith in Christ and not allow us to be just a secular population hoping to be blessed doing mess. Well, I think one of the mistakes we've made at the Christian community at home is we have practiced appeasement. You know, we just think if we'll just tolerate everything and tolerate everyone, that eventually they'll tolerate us. <laughs> but the, just the opposite seems to be happening. The more ground we concede, the less tolerant they become of our worldview. And we're gonna have to have the courage to say, we have the right to believe this in the public square. We have the right to talk about this where we work or in our schools or our hospitals. We're not backing up anymore. Right. We're not gonna be angry or violent or belligerent. But we're not backing up. And I think until we get to that point and we're willing to defend our faith with the same boldness that we see people advocating for all their other worldviews, right. we're gonna to continue to lose opportunities and our children's futures are at stake. So I, I can't just ignore that. I have to find a voice. Right, and I think that we need to also focus on investing and divesting from certain things. You have a school system that's teaching your children to hate God and to not observe the beauty of our country, divest from that. Take your kids out of the school. And if institutions like Christian private schools or even Christian charter schools are doing the right thing, then why don't we invest in that? Why don't we try to collectively send our children to those schools and magnify them? Even with certain uh, companies, if you're going to be what we call woke, if you're going to be anti-Christian, then Christians need to take a real step and say, we're going to divest financially and you're going to hit rock bottom because there's a ton of Christians that live in our country. And a, and a lot of them are participating in some of these companies that have turned their back on us. We need to really start focusing on that because money talks more than violence in many cases. Amen. You can't be violent enough to stop a, a Bud Light company or Target from existing, it's not enough violence to do that and it's unnecessary. But if you divest from those companies and they lose $5 billion in market value, I mean, they're gonna have to start making some real decisions. Uh, same thing in the school system. You start taking your children out of these public schools, what, what are they gonna do? They have no money, they have no support. They're gonna begin to close down. And we don't have to lift a finger to fight anybody over it. We can do that methodically with a plan and a tactic. And I think it'll be most effective. I, I honestly believe Christians should not have to walk around with a cross in their hand. Let your actions speak more than your religion. Um, everybody can be religious. 
And that's in, in some in some cases, people use that more than they do their actions. If I'm carrying a cross, that means I'm a good Christian, but your actions suck. If I'm carrying a cross and I'm going to church on Sunday and I have this church lo lo logo on my shirt, then somehow this is what I represent. But, but you're still watching Netflix and you're watching some of these programs that are anti-Christian. And so I'm hoping that, and I tell you what, if I think if, if Christians would, like every Christian in America would just take a tour here, I, I, we wouldn't have, our country would not be the same. It will not be the same. People will be reinvigorated and understand the history and carry that history into the United, the United States of America. Mm -hmm.